One last thing that we can um, look at is how much stabilization can actually be achieved with um, optimal stimulus spending, uh, optimal public, uh, public spending. So we've obtained a formula for uh, optimal public expenditure when we have an unemployment gap. Optimal. So uh, when there is an initial unemployment gap, u0 minus u star, we saw that optimal public expenditure so satisfies this um, sufficient statistic formula. So we have gc minus gc star. So the gap between public spending and Samuelson spending over gc star is equal to, so we have two epsilon m, epsilon, so elasticity of substitution between public and private good, m, the unemployment multiplier, one plus Z, Z is just a constant of um, in the model epsilon m square, and then we have the u zero minus u star over u star. So that's how much spending there is. Another question is: so we know we start at this unemployment gap u zero minus u star. Can we say something about the final unemployment gap where we get to? You know, so we know we've seen already when we had our implicit. A formula for optimal public spending that it, it cannot be optimal to completely fill the unemployment gap. There will always be some unemployment gap left. And in that way, fiscal policy is you know, less powerful than monetary policy because monetary policy, actually, it is optimal to completely um, fill unemployment gap with monetary policy. So it should be the preferred policy. It doesn't create extra distortions. Fiscal policy does create distortions. So we want to reduce unemployment gap, but not fill it out completely. Uh, but the question is, how much are we actually going to feed, and how does that depend on the sufficient statistic? So here we know how much it's, opt, you know, how much spending there should be, what's optimal. But we also know how the unemployment gap depends uh, on public spending and the initial unemployment gap because we, we computed that to obtain our explicit formula. So we showed that um, we showed that the resulting The resulting unemployment gap, that is the unemployment gap, resulting unemployment gap, you know, after public uh, expenditure. So once we've implemented the stimulus package, uh, we, we know that this is given by this expression, which we had computed early, uh, earlier. So u minus u star over u star. So we know that it's u zero minus u star over u star, so that's the initial unemployment gap. And then we showed that um, we showed that from this initial unemployment gap, we had to subtract uh, this expression. So we had uh, uh, we had minus m, the unemployment multiplier that tells you like how much unemployment is reduced by public spending. And then we had uh, Z. Uh, oh. Right, and then we had a two, and two, then we had Z, and then we had this GC minus GC star over GC star. So this we derived in the lecture in which we obtained um, the explicit formula. Uh, so this is what we had, and I think, so I'm just checking that there is no typo here, and, and Z we had defined it as one over U star. Uh, this is just a function of um, the efficient allocation. Um, so one over U star times the harmonic average of public and private spending, which is 2 divided by 1 over g star plus 1 over c star. All right, so this is what we have. Okay. So this is what we had, what we had showed. So on the one hand, we know how the unemployment gap is going to be reduced from the initial unemployment gap as a function of the size of the stimulus package and the unemployment multiplier. And at the same time, we know what is the optimal stimulus package. So we can combine these two things 
optimal stimulus package and plug it into these formulas that tells us how the unemployment gap will respond to any stimulus package. We combine these two things and then we can figure out like once public spending is optimal, how much unemployment gap would be left. Um, so if we combine these two things, combine optimal stimulus with the effect of the stimulus on unemployment, So what do we get? We're going to get that u minus u star over u star. So it's going to be u0 minus u star over u star. That's initial stimulus minus zm over 2. That's our constant. And then we have gc minus gc star. So here we have to then plug now our optimal stimulus package to um, to epsilon m, then we have to put the denominator 1 plus z epsilon m square, and then we'll have u0 minus u star over u star. So great, so now we have the initial unemployment gap, and then we have a function of the initial unemployment gap because we know that the optimal stimulus package depends on the uh, initial unemployment gap. So now we have all this stuff. So let's see, here we have 2, 2 that's going to disappear. Uh, Great, so now we can put everything. So we know that u minus u star over u star, it's going to be 1 minus z epsilon m square divided by 1 plus z epsilon m square. So this is very nice because this is a very simple formula. Time u0 minus u star over u star, uh, but this simplifies greatly. So now we get our result that u minus u star over u star, so the final unemployment gap, it's going to just be 1, and this simplifies very nicely, 1 over 1 plus z epsilon m square times u0 minus u star over u star. And so that's our key result. So this is showing you, this is a final unemployment gap. You know, once we've applied, uh, once we've applied the optimal stimulus, and this is the initial unemployment gap. Okay, and now we, so, and so here we have, uh, we can now stare at this formula and see a, a little bit like what we learned from it. So um, this formula is, is um, basically very nice uh, because it's going to tell us that with optimal stimulus spending, the final unemployment gap is just going to be a share, uh, you know, it, it's always going to be a share of the initial unemployment gap. And of course, that share is always, uh, is going to be, of course, uh, always less than one. And that share is given by the expression we have in the formula. So basically what the formula says is that the final unemployment gap And that final, and you know, that final unemployment gap is just u minus u star is a share. And what is that share? Well, that share is the expression we have there. So it's one over one plus z epsilon m square. the share of the initial unemployment gap. So that's really the key result that comes out of that. And that, that share is really, uh, that's the key expression here.
Okay, and so what do we learn from that? You know, that seems like a basic, a very simple result, but we learn a lot. So first of all, what you can see is that the share is strictly positive. Okay, this, so what that means is that uh, stimulus spending never completely, you know, never eliminates the unemployment gap. You know, there is always some unemployment gap left at the end of the day. Uh, what you can see also is that the share, well, uh, the share is always strictly less than one. So it means that, uh, you know, the, the, well, you know, the share, is, I guess, is non-zero. That's what I should... I should have said. Uh, so the fact that it's non-zero, it means that the stimulus, there is always some unemployment gap left at the end. Then the other thing that you can see is that the chair is exactly between zero and it's always positive and always less than one. Uh, irrespective, because you know, you, the multiplier is squared, so multiplier can be positive, negative, m squared is always positive, z is positive, the elasticity of substitution is positive, so the chair is always between zero and one. So that means that uh, be, you know, uh, because the because the share is less than one, uh, so stimulus spending always reduces the initial unemployment gap. Because um, you have a share that's less than one, it means that your initial unemployment gap is going to shrink. Um, but because the share is strictly positive, the unemployment gap will never be uh, completely eliminated. There will be always something left over, and that's because of the distortion caused by uh, public spending. So you don't want to completely eliminate the unemployment gap, unlike what you do with monetary policy. Uh, so that's great. What we can see also is that um, the share is um, decreasing with epsilon, the elasticity of substitution. So what you can see is that um, the final unemployment gap is smaller when, uh, you know, public goods are more substitutable. With private goods. And here the logic is that if public goods are more substitutable with private goods, it's less cost to do stimulus spending, you'll do more stimulus spending and therefore you'll be able to eliminate a bigger um, share of the unemployment gap. Okay, uh, so this is just because there's more stimulus when uh, you know, the optimal st stimulus package is larger when public goods are more substitutable with private goods. You can also see that the share of the initial employment gap that's left over is decreasing with the multiplier m. See, right? Because m shows up just as m squared in the denominator. Um, so, you know, m has a sophisticated, you know, kind of complicated impact on the optimal stimulus spending. I mean, it has a home shaped impact. So, when M is small, higher M, it's more stimulus spending, and then it peaks and then it decreases. But at the same time, the larger is M, the more effect stimulus spending has on unemployment. And overall, once you combine these two things, what you can see is that um, the final unemployment gap uh, the final unemployment gap is smaller when the multiplier is larger. So the more, so the more when uh, fiscal policy is more powerful at reducing unemployment, you don't necessarily want more fiscal policy. We said you had a home shape pattern for the size of the stimulus package, but when um, fiscal policy is more powerful, it's always true that the unemployment gap that will result from optimal policy will be smaller and smaller. And in fact, two things that we see is that uh, the final unemployment gap, so what you can achieve with optimal policy, 
converges to zero when, in two circumstances, epsilon converges to infinity and m converges to infinity. Um, so, if your public goods are perfectly substitutable for private good, then the final unemployment gap will go to zero. And that's because in that case, the optimal policy is to completely eliminate the unemployment gap because, the, you know, if you have, if they are perfect, if they are perfect substitute public and private goods, it doesn't matter that public goods crowd out private goods, they substitute perfectly. So in that case, you want to eliminate the unemployment gap. If the multiplier is infinite. Of course, it means that when you do a bit of stimulus spending, you're going to uh, erase completely the unemployment gap because uh, stimulus spending is so powerful. And in that case, you also want to eliminate the unemployment gap. Uh, so there are two, situ two extreme situations in which you would eliminate the unemployment gap. Um, but you know, when epsilon and m, the sufficient statistics are finite, as they are in reality, you will always have some unemployment gap uh, left over. 